Hey guys and welcome to my channel. This video is going to address living with a narcissist. I get so many survivors um, have asked me about this topic. So I want to go ahead and address it in this video or at least, you know, begin to address it. All right. And give you some tips and tools and suggestions on how to deal with this because a lot of people are like, okay, I'm just realizing I'm with a narcissist and I live with this person. Now what? Uh, what should I be doing? How can I cope in the meanwhile? Um, how can I get out of this situation? What can I be doing right now to help me? All right. So I want to address that in this video. Um, living with a narcissist can be a nightmare. <laughs> it could certainly be a roller coaster ride full of no ups really and a lot of downs honestly when we look at this in a most healthy minded sense the ups really aren't the ups that we thought they were in hindsight and as we understand the cycle of abuse and what that love bomb or those fake apologies really represent okay so you know it's just, and it's um an extremely toxic situation all right, so you're going to have to break that enmeshment and that might seem really hard to do when you're in such close proximity with the narcissist, you know, because once you're under that roof with them, it creates a whole nother dynamic there as opposed to someone who may be dealing with this narcissist in external environments, maybe at a workplace, you're dealing with them during your work hours, but you get relief, you get to go home. And you know, some of you are getting relief when you go to work and you're not under the roof with that person. And then you're dreading when you have to come home and you know, be bothered with them again. So when we learn how to break that enmeshment, um, that's gonna take you far when you are cohabitating with a narcissist and that's gonna boil down to detachment. Yeah. So, you know, let's talk about some of the things that you're gonna have to be detaching from um, in these situations. Um, number one, lies. You know, you're going to have to really firmly stand in the truth and your truth. OK, so you're going to be detaching from lies. You're going to be detaching from their truth, which equals more lies. Right. We're going to be detaching from their projections because you know how that is. They like to project their raw and um, typically their negative emotions onto other people. You know, everything that they're doing, you're suddenly doing it. OK, so their projections and their deflections, you know, you bring something to them, they're deflecting it, playing dumb. So you definitely want to do that. You're going to be detaching from their drama. OK, that means you're not going to be taking the invitations, you know, the manipulation. You're going to detach from that. Their feelings, you need to detach from their feelings. OK. Because that's a part of that enmeshment right there um, when you're running off of that other person's feelings and caring about their feelings too much, all right? And now you're really going to have to detach from those flying monkeys even. And um, let's talk about this detachment. Does it have to be obvious to their eyes why you're still living with them? No, but internally you're very detached. I mean, this is what the narcissist is doing to you, right? They're pretending like they're attached in a certain sense but they're actually very detached. So, I mean, they're going to notice when you're not taking the invitation to argue with them, to, you know, let your energy mesh with theirs and come down into that dark pit. Um, they're going to notice it. But even if you see it really, this, this video right here is really going to depend on where you are in your emotional maturity, how well you'll be able to pull this off. Okay. Cause some people can give them the crumbs that they want to make it appear a certain way to the narcissist. And all the while they are secretly planning that escape and they will be getting away from that narcissist. But most people are very devastated when they're even finding out the typical survivor initially anyway, is very devastated when they find out that they're dealing or they have been having dealings with, or, you know, connected themselves with this narcissist and they live with this person. So a lot of people aren't, you know, usually typically having that emotional maturity to be able to fake the funk with the narcissist and almost similarly be status quo with them while in the background, they're actually really planning to leave that narcissist. 
A lot of people aren't able to um, juggle that. If you can do that, then you can, you know, other people will, you know, start changing their behaviors and not really be engaging the narcissist outwardly or externally to as the way that they were. You know, not many people can continue to engage the narcissist similarly and, you know, keep their sanity and still, um, you know, plan that escape. All right. So really right now, tapping into your emotions versus your logic is going to take you really far in breaking that enmeshment and really getting into the detachment. Okay. So, um, you know, your emotions are going to be, you know, feeling sorry for yourself, um, feeling bad about the situation, all of the hurt and those along those lines. But your logic is going to be standing in, understanding why you need to break away from this narcissist, why you are planning or, you know, making those steps. And it's going to be factually based and not feelings based. Okay. So that's what we're talking about when it's emotions versus logic. So, you know, detaching from your emotions on a certain level and walking in your logic and leaning on that to help you make, you know, logical decisions right now, because your emotions could be very much still wrapped up in that narcissist. And then that can be dangerous. And then that can suck you back in. All right. So um, outside of, of course, breaking that enmeshment, utilizing detachment, you're going to be planning, okay? And when I talk about planning, I'm talking about independence right now. Because if you live with a narcissist, it's possible that there could be some financial enmeshment or mingling going on here. So, um, you know, I don't know the living situation, your money situation, but, you know, we're planning right now. And what are we planning? Okay, where am I going to live? Or am I going to be the one to leave? Or I'm going to get them out of the house? You know, this is the plans that need to be decided at this point. Are you guys sharing a vehicle? Is that going to devastate your life? Are they going to try to take it from you? Is the title under your name? You know, planning what will change you know, once I break away from this narc, was I relying on that narcissist in some type of way for something? And how can I replace what I was getting from them? If anything, you may find that you weren't getting anything from them and they were just a liability to you, really. So once you get rid of them, you're actually increasing. You're increasing one way or another, but you're increasing financially. And maybe you were the one paying for his children's child support and his reckless habits and bailing him out of his drama and dusting him off in life, you know, for instance. And then, of course, sometimes, you know, living with a narcissist can be beyond lovers. It could be relatives. It could be friends or it could be a roommate. You may have a roommate and you realize they're a narc and you don't want to be around that energy. Okay. I mean, of course, in those situations, it's looking for another roommate or, you know, and then sometimes it gets stickier. Oh, both of our names are on this lease. We just started this lease. This lease has six more months to go. And, you know, there's a lot of things to be planned for. So you need to know your legal rights, of course. You know, especially for those of you, um, maybe a lot of times some guys make me move in with a girl and find out she's a narcissist and it's like, whoa, you know, my name's not even on the, le on the lease. But if you have Mel going there, um, in most states, you should be able to at least have a 30 day notice if that narcissist wanted you to leave out of the home. But we all know underhanded things that female narcissists can do, such as create um, domestic um, violence situations and falsify that to get you out of the home. And then, of course, they'll run and get a restraining order at that point to keep you from being able to be in the premises. You know, a, a really... A good friend of mine's call that mad day, you know, and this is why moving forward, you know, you should do always do things to protect yourself, you know, and that includes giving yourself options, plan A, plan B, plan C, you know, if you do something that may seem a little risky or poses any type of risk for yourself and you have a plan B and a plan C. Okay. 
And when I'm plan, when I say planning, I also mean, you know, sometimes that means changing your phone passwords and social media passwords and emails. If you think they know information like that so that they can't go in there and see what you're saying or planning. Or, you know, don't utilize if you're trying to keep this under wraps right now and you're being secretive of course um, don't change the passwords but don't utilize anything on any of those accounts in your plannings and then at that point you have to be diligent and erasing phone records and phone calls and communications unless you were able to get you another phone that you could use for that and you know keep it hidden so, you know, those are some other options as well. You know, when I say plan, I also um, want to include in here documentations, you know, for those of you who have children with a narcissist and you may need their social security number and information that you may have um, evidence or anything that may uh, be needed in legal proceedings that you have access to now before stuff hits the fan before they start trying to hide things from you <clears throat> just be very careful guys because you know i've heard all types of situations and you know sometimes these narcissists are like severe con artists they have they have multiple social security numbers like you would be like what yeah and then you think you have the right info and you don't you may not even been given their real government name, like seriously. And it's like, do I even know this person? No, you don't. Not, not the way you thought you did. All right. So, um, along with knowing your rights, you really need to also know your resources, of course, because this is going to help you in a planning process. Um, what do I mean by your resources? Well, there's legal aid for those of you who may want to consult with a lawyer for any reason. And even if you feel like you can't afford it, there are um, nonprofit organizations out there and they can give you legal help um, and is income based. OK, there are charities and there are all types of um, options that you have. And especially for you women out there. There are safe houses and shelters, and I know that you may cringe a shelter, a safe house, but you know, sometimes when you're living with a narcissist, you don't get the luxury to have that plan, especially um, that waiting to do all these things, especially if it, there's physical violence and, you know, ch in children getting abused and different things like that, that causes for you to immediately you know, need to be leaving out of that situation and not subjecting yourself or risking your life. Okay. You would go down to your local um, social services or, you know, county assistance. Some people call welfare offices. They can give you these resources. If you don't have family, friends, uh, you know, like relatives to be able to assist you at that time, um, like I said, there's nonprofits and organizations, Catholic charities, that lots of them that will help women in those situations. Okay. And um, also I want to keep in mind when you, when you're making your plans, you may have a plan to say, you know what I, I do, I'm in a nonviolent situation, Coach Lakia, I'm going to be able to stash this money over here and break away from the narcissist in X amount of time. And then maybe you confided in your sister or your best friend, you know, that one other person. And they was like, well, you know what, if you want to come here, you can don't close the door on that option. You know, give yourself options, even if you don't want to use that plan, even if you don't feel like you will need to have that plan. When people offer to help you, you know, the ones that actually care about you and want to get you out that situation or be of help, you don't have to say no to them, even if you don't want to have to do it. Like you feel, I don't want to be a burden because, you know, survivors, we're so used to putting ourselves last and we're a lot of times we're not used to taking help. We like to close our options, give yourself options because you never know. You may need to go sooner. And you're like, you know what? My sister said it before that I could come there. I didn't just shoot her down and say, no, don't worry about it. I said, okay, I'll let you know. Thank you so much for extending that to me. Hopefully I won't have to, but it's really good to know that I have that option. Keep your options. 
Okay, survivors, keep your options. Give yourself all the options that you can. That's what narcissists technically do. And this is why they always have a supply. They always keep some options around. So when you're planning this escape from the narcissist, give yourself options. You may have different things going at one time. It's really true about not putting your eggs in one basket. Because you never know. When you have to evacuate one plan and go to another, at least you have another option. Okay? At least you have another option. And then if you're in a situation where your family said that you could come there, it's still good to know about the safe houses and the, the shelters. You know, there are actually some really nice ones. There are not all these crappy ones that you see in the movies where people are sleeping on one inch mats. And no, there are actually some really good um, organizations out there that could really help you get back on your feet if you were very... Um, financially dependent on that narcissist and even they will take you and your children okay so it's really good to know that because then you won't be blindsided okay my family member promised I could come and now the time has come for me to go and bam all of a sudden I can't come they're reneging on their offer they're not there for me right but you had some other options lined up you had a plan b you had a plan c so this is what i'm talking about guys as far as giving yourself all the options that you can all right so keep your mind open in that way all right don't let your pride and your ego or you know you don't want to look weak you don't want to look that look everyone goes through situations and seasons okay everybody so when we're in a planning phase, you know, just keeping all of that in mind will help you in that situation. All right. Now, um, I also want to touch on as far as the planning goes, your things, you know, sometimes you have things. And I remember when I was in a situation where I had to just go or, you know, I didn't have a lot of time. I didn't know. Yeah, you know, my mind sometimes we're just so caught up in, you know, the hurt, the pain, this, that we're, you know, we're not thinking straight, you know, and it's great that you could run into a video like this ahead of time that could plant some seeds, you know, if you're ever in that situation or if you are beginning to plan it, good for you, you know, as I might touch on some angles that didn't cross your mind or give you some food for thought, you know. But, you know, there's a such thing as storage. You know, if you have valuable things, you know, you're planning to leave that narcissist. You're like, okay, the narcissist goes to work tomorrow. I want to get out of this house. And you could plan it so that you can put your things into storage. And it's not like you have to walk away and leave all your belongings, you know. And a lot of storage places give you the first month for free, you know. So then you would have the 30 days if you already knew where you were going to be going next, or if you needed to continue the storage, you know, at least, you know, down the, down the road, you don't have to pay and rebuy all of that stuff. And you feel like, oh, I had to leave all my possessions behind. And sometimes you do. Sometimes it's like that, or you, you're able to come back at a later date, but then you might find that they broke some of your stuff. Like I had a narcissist steal my Bible for me. <laughs> that was really crazy. They stole my Bible from me and, and some other things. But um, yeah, things happen. And when you have to leave the house or they're leaving the house, like it's just so many things could go down. But for those of you who are ever able to plan ahead of time, you can take your possessions into storage. If you have nowhere else to put it, get yourself a storage unit. You know, narcissists, they do it, but they do it in the most ill sense when they're going to do that discard in the middle of the night or when you're at work and you come home and they done took your stuff and theirs. They're not just taking what they came with. So, you know, if you want to protect some of your assets and your belongings, bam. And you can put vehicles in, in storage as well. Um, some storage units have parking spaces for vehicles, okay? All right, so um, yes, we're going to be breaking that enmeshment, which is going to include getting into the art of detachment, and we are going to plan, plan, plan for those of you who have that 
availability to do that in time. We're going to know our legal rights and know about resources. Okay. And we're going to plan and move in silence as well. You know, I want to touch on that before I move to um, the next two things. All right. Moving in silence. And I've made a video on here, five reasons why you should use the R or be silent when dealing with a narcissist. All right. I will put that under the description here. And if you are watching the video, like as soon as I upload it, give me about five minutes and I will tag it on to the end of the video where you could just simply click it. Okay. But yeah, moving in silence, because of course, once they know your next move, <laughs> they're going to be making moves to counter it. Okay. So if you're able to kind of fool them in a certain sense and they're not, they don't know what's going on behind the back, but in the background, because you're not wearing, wearing your emotions on your sleeves, you're not changing your behaviors too, too much, you know, it's kind of like you're mind fucking them at that point, but you know, it's just to protect yourself. All right. Because what they don't know empowers you at that point. All right. All right. So the next thing that I have on here is to build your support system. OK, so, of course, this can be um, professionally. Professionally is going to be the best way, you know, because therapists and life coaches such as myself, you know, we maintain privacy with our customers. You know, we can and our clients, we can talk to you guys and give you advice and it's not going to get back to the narcissist. But be very careful who else you might pull into um, or who you notify of your moves to. Because sometimes, you know, they're flying monkeys or they're on the fence and we're not, we are not completely privy to that. And you may be wondering how did the narcissist find out that or they may, you know, the narcissist might manipulate them and, you know, and they don't know that they're being manipulated and used. You know what I mean? So, um be careful with any friends or family that you bring in, but you want to build a support system. All right. And professional support systems are the best ways are ones to build in when dealing with a narcissist. All right. And um, along with building your support system, for those of you who are employed or working a career, you know, look at your sick time, your vacation time, your personal days. You know, if you could set up some family leave because, you know, you're going through an emotional period and you might need time off at work and maybe you don't want to, you know, blow your career behind this and you want to be covered, you know, and your employer might not be thrilled that you're using these days, but legally you are eligible to use those days, you know, so knowing what you have available to you, um, when it comes to that, you know, and that's also a part of building your support, you know? All right. So the last thing that I have on here, um, well, you know what, let me go back to build support. Build support is going to also include, of course, learning more about narcissistic abuse, you know, channels like mine is going to be an excellent resource for you to continue to learn how these people think and operate further increasing your emotional maturity so that you're actually staying several steps ahead of them because once you really understand how this works you're going to be able to almost <laughs> feel like a psychic with them you will all right all right so the last thing that i have on here is um know the game and that that kind of ties in with building your support and increasing your emotional maturity but you know know what the narcissist may do when they may start be putting one and one together, hmm, this person might be trying to leave or the cat's out of the bag and they just know that you're going to be leaving. All right. They might try to sabotage you, of course. All right. They're going to try to mess with your emotions again. So you're going to refuse those invites that I talked about in detachment when you're detaching from their drama and manipulation and their feelings. All right. Um, they might try to love bomb you. They might, you know, try to like, why are you leaving? Come on. No, one more chance. Our family deserves one more time. Or no, I really do care about you and love you for the relatives and the friends, the roommates. They might guilt you. Where am I going to live? What am I going to, you know, they'll try everything, you know, these, and then that comes with like the fake apologies and whatnot. So you really have to know the game, you know, and then they're going to be stalking. Because they're like, oh, this person's leaving. Oh, who they with? You know, they're going to think like them. 
like, oh, she, she must be going with somebody else or he must have another woman. Who is this bitch or this person that's trying to come in between us now? You know, they're going to think things like that. They're going to they they're not going to think, well, maybe I'm just a narcissist and uh, nobody wants to nobody has time for that. You know, they're going to be thinking, well, hmm. And then they're going to start hiding things from you, assets, you know, and, you know, they'll lie about anything. And then they're just going to be thinking about their best interest. They may not care that you're leaving, but they may be like, well, are you going to put me on chess board? You know, that may become the issue now, you know, trying to protect their behinds. And then, you know, the smear campaigns that they'll start to go run into other people. Oh, yeah, she's trying to break up our family, our home and Oh yeah, he's, he's beating on me and, you know, start planting seeds. And then, you know, they might try to go to the people that you want to support you and start filling their mind up with lies so that they won't help you now and make it harder for you to leave. You know, they might try to sabotage you at your workplace, you know, get you fired because they're like, well, where are you going to leave if you don't have no money? Where are you going to go? But we, uh, we talked about resources because you still have them no matter what. All right. So you really have to know the game and the underhanded things that this narcissist may try to do or is more probable for them to do to try to keep you stuck and in the cycle of abuse, guys. All right. Um, living with a narcissist, you know, um, give yourself an outlet as well. Um, sometimes you just really need to get out that home, you know, whether it's going to the gym for a workout, going for a walk, you know, having somewhere else to go. Um, when things are getting hot and heavy or, you know, when it's just, you need to come up for some air, you need some light, you know, or you feel yourself being pulled into a space or a place that you don't need to be. And that's where building your support is good too. So we can add, you know, having somewhere to go, you know, a beautiful site, your favorite place, things you can do and go to, um, to vent and relieve your stress if you will, you know, that's going to be a part of building your support as well, guys. All right. So, um, we're approaching a half an hour on this video, but you know, I really wanted to just at least start this conversation about living with the narcissist, but we have to detach. A lot of detachment is going to have to occur here because chances are there's a trauma bond, you know, and you may be experiencing the gaslighting, um, the cognitive dissonance, and, you know, so many other things that come along with, with, you know, experiencing narcissistic abuse and depending on how long you've had this relationship and how severe it's gotten for you. All right. But I do offer coaching and um, I help people through situations like this. So, you know, this is a great time to build your support and make that investment if, in yourself. All right. And I have all types of packages um, available from as small as a half an hour session with me. Um, and I do voice calls, Skype, FaceTime. I do email coaching guys. You can go to LakiaCrawford.com and take a look at all the different kinds of packages that are available to you. I do have a support group guys over on Facebook. Okay. Um, just inbox me and let me know that you are a survivor. That, um, support group is for survivors of narcissistic abuse. All right. That link is below on my videos. All right. And, you know, just go check my website out. So many resources there. I've written four books, guys, therapeutic books to help you fill the voids and get further wisdom and information. Um, I have no narc zone merchandise for those of you who want to make your statements against narcissistic abuse and have fun with your fashion. All right. So, you know, if this video resonates with you, go ahead and hit the like button, guys. If you haven't done so, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Um, almost 500 videos here to help you understand narcissistic abuse, toxic relationships, psychology, help you increase your emotional maturity, work on your shadow work with yourself and so forth and so on. Um, great ways to support the channel is to always like my videos, uh, leave a comment, share my videos, um, because you know, they don't teach this in school and we certainly need to be more than book smart in life, right? We need more than our book smarts because <laughs> life is just full of relationships with people, places, and things, and especially 
the relationship that we have with ourselves, guys. All right. If you're living with a narcissist, the ultimate goal should be to um, get out of that situation. Either it's going to be removing that narc from the household or you can be removing yourself. And, you know, sometimes things get sticky. I understand some people have bought houses with a narcissist, you know, and this is why I talked about legal aid and getting that lawyer and understanding your rights when it comes with that. All right. So um, you just want to know because knowledge can be power when utilized, but give yourself many options, move in silence, guys, and we're going to break that enmeshment. We're going to practice the art of detachment. We're going to plan, 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 plan. We're going to build our, our um, support and we're going to know the game. All right, guys. So I hope that this helps somebody that is living with a narcissist. Um, you know, I make these general videos and I know that all types of situations are going on. You know, you could be pregnant right now um, and living with that narcissist, you know, but there are a lot of resources for you. OK, closed mouths do not get fed. You have to find out what those um, options are for you and you can start with the people, your family and friends. But like I said in the video, sometimes they drop the ball as well. And there are a lot of nonprofit organizations out there that can help you. Okay. Never feel like you are stuck. There is always another choice, guys. There is always another choice. All right. So please continue to enlighten yourself. Please put your health first. Do not live your life in fear, guys. Keep doing the work. And until next time, please take care.